Welcome to The Culture Edit, unique perspectives into the personal and professional lives of individuals at the helm of successful business, athletics, art, and design. Welcome to The Culture Edit. It's Sunday, November 5th. I can't believe we're actually in November. Uh, Say hello to the lovely people out there. Hello. Sunday afternoon. Did I say morning? No, you just said Sunday. Just like, yeah. You're elaborating on the time of day. Sunday afternoon, post airport. The perfect day. Yeah. I mean, gorgeous day. It couldn't be more perfect for first airport. Yeah. Because sometimes first airport is really cold and like kind of miserable, but that can also be fun because like it gets everyone like fired up because it's so cold. But today was truly the perfect first airport. Short sleeves. Short sleeves, short shorts. Yeah. Short finger gloves. Yeah, it was I didn't even have ear covers on. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I didn't either. Oh, I thought you had a little cap on. Oh, at the beginning, yeah, but then that was just for the ride there. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people overdressed, though. Lots. A lot of people overdressed. <laughs> I, I said, because like Dawn was telling me how she was overdressed. Okay, you said you weren't going to jump right into the airport. Here we go. But, but this is, it's, <laughs> it's, called, it's called cold PTSD. Okay. So because earlier in the week, we were all so cold and miserable on like every activity that we did, you have PTSD from being that cold. So then you automatically, you overlayer even when it's not that cold because huh. you're worried about being cold. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, but before we get into airport, we have a couple a couple things. That's One, the airport ride, by the way, for people that don't know. Yes, the airport ride, yeah. which is a cycling ride in Atlanta, a big group ride. Yeah, notorious. It only happens during the winter, so it's kind of like, it's like a big deal when, it, when the first airport ride comes. I mean, it does happen in the summer, but it's not the same. It doesn't count. Yeah. We need to change the name of it, like to something different. Just the 29 ride. The 20, 29er. Yeah. Yeah. But before we get into that, a couple updates. So I got a Koros uh, based on Ryan's recommendation or I guess suggestion because he had heard that they're really good. Why didn't you get a Wahoo uh, Element Rival? But they stopped making them. No, they make them. Oh. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I have one. No, I have one. You no, just use I'm, mine. No, I'm the one that got it from Matt. I had to trade all of my oh, supplements right, right, right. for Matt to give me the watch. That's so true. I got the watch. I gifted it to you because I didn't like it. Yeah. It's the too big for your I wrist. The reason I didn't like it is because I have tiny baby wrists and it's way too big for my wrist and they only made one size. So when I was wearing it, it would like literally clunk into things like on, and it would, even if I had it really tight, it, it would just like t- turn to like the side of my wrist and it just did. It, it, it was too big for my wrist. That's yeah. all. Um, and like really heavy for my wrist. Okay. So trainer will accept that. So no, but that is the truth. That's really why I gave it to you. Cause I was yeah. like, I just can't, this is huge. Um, but anyways, I ended up, I've had a Fitbit for a long time and I do really like the Fitbit. I think Google's technology is like so far above everyone's. I will say with it, they're obviously geared more towards like the daily activity recovery type stuff so it's not geared toward like the GPS isn't good. Like, it, yeah, you, like the technology you're saying superior is not for endurance athlete technology that's not you're you're just talking about general measuring your sleep and all that they have a lot of data around recovery which i think is cool like very similar to whoop yeah but i actually feel like they have even more data than whoop provides um but anyway so i thought i always really liked that i i where i kept getting hung up is the battery life wouldn't last if you were to literally go out on like a run because the gps would just destroy the battery it wasn't really made for that and then also their algorithms are a little like over aggressive for an endurance athlete. Their algorithms are made for like a sedentary person that gets up and does like hot girl walk once a day. Well, I mean, that's their brand. Yeah, that's totally. What, yeah. Totally. So that's for, their target audience. Yeah. So for yeah. like an endurance athlete who's going out, like you're doing a three or four hour ride, it was basically just you've burned 10,000 calories. And like, no, I haven't burned 10,000 calories. But anyways. Okay. So you got, got the chorus. chorus. But this isn't even the, so I, I like it so far. The data, so it's definitely geared to people who want to load like a training plan onto their watch. I would say it's more useful for runners than cyclists because it's like, because as a cyclist, you have a bike computer, which is like the same thing. Yeah. It's a runner watch. Uh, but it's a runner watch, but it's I. It's like competing with Garmin and Polar and But it's, Sunto you know, a fraction and, of the, well, the one I got is the Pace 3 and it's a lot cheaper than most of the Garmin. So I like it. It's touchscreen, but it also, you can use the dials. But the funny thing that happens, so I order it, it gets delivered and normally I have everything sent to our like business center. So things don't get stolen. But for some reason I had this sent to the house. I was waiting on it all morning. And as soon as we left to go to the office, it gets delivered. 
And I was like, oh my God, I have to go home and get it to make sure it doesn't get stolen. As I'm, I'm on the bird scooter, as I'm scooting my way home, I can see our front door. And like we have, for those of you who haven't been to our house, we're in a brownstone. So there's like a stoop. You have to walk up the front stairs to get to the front door. There's literally a crackhead walking up our front steps to grab the package Yep. while eating a bag of pota- chips in his other hand. Like Lay's? Lay's, like the mini Lay's chips. Mini Lay's? So he's just like casually plain or, eating the pla- or, plain, oh. plain Lay's and he's walking up our stairs clear, and he's literally reaching for the package. Like this guy's just going to take, steal my package. I come in so hot on this scooter, I swear I almost like skid out and I just like scream at the top of my lungs. Yeah. Like, don't even think about it. I don't want to scream into the microphone, but I don't know why. I just like, it was like bloody murder. Like, don't even think about it. Yeah. And he immediately dropped the package and just. Oh, he had it like in his hands? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. And then walks back down the stairs and just stares at me. Yeah. And then just slowly walks away while still eating his potato chips. Anyways. All, all of our listeners outside the perimeter right now are horrified by this story. Yeah. It doesn't happen OTP. And it like. Bothers, it's a regular occurrence at ITP though. What bothers me, it makes your house feel violated. You know, like you were like, this guy's on our steps, like on our front porch. Yeah. It just makes your house feel violated. Yeah. It's very, I don't know. But it was just, cr- think about that timing. Like I was just saying how I thought it was going to be stolen. And then I scoot home. It's a, it's a two minute scooter ride. Yeah. That's why we don't send things to the house. Yeah. Had I been 30 seconds later, there'd be Good a track, job. there'd be a crackhead tracking his his uh, heart rate. Downtown. I know. Do you think he would have um, worn the watch? I think he would try to sell, sell it for like fentanyl or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some other things on the more positive note this week is we had two really great interviews. Huge. Huge interviews. Interviews for the podcast. They were awesome. Uh, I can't wait for both of them to come out. Yeah. Two very different. Opposite, top, like, o- opposite ends of the spectrum. Two very different people, very different professions, and but but very, both great athletes. Both so they great have that, athletes yeah. and both great leaders. Yeah, but just very different ends of the spectrum from like a professional standpoint. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. And then after running on Saturday, we met up with all of our friends. And How went, many miles did you do? I did just over eleven. So eleven miles. Then we went to our favorite festival of the year, Chomp and Stomp. I think it's our favorite. You think it's over Inman Park Fest? It's totally different. Yeah. I don't know. Because it's fun. I mean, Inman Park Fest <laughs> is fun the second day on Sunday when there's not as many people. Like late Sunday, I think I really like yeah. Inman Park. So Chomp and Stomp is a bluegrass festival in the neighborhood of Cabbage Town, which is actually one neighborhood over from us. So yeah, we're walk, in Inman we walk Park. right to it. We have to literally go through a tunnel, a infamous the tunnel Krog called tunnel. Crog Street Tunnel to get to this neighborhood. Cabbage Town is traditionally a working class neighborhood, uh, and it's got a lot of great history, and they do a great, great job. It's the 20th anniversary of Chomp and Stomp. Um, they've got two main stages. With it's also grass. a chili cook-off. Chili cook-off. We, we never get to that. We've never actually gotten the chili. They start at 11. If You have to be in line at 11 to get the chili. Yeah. Uh, and we don't do lines or... Or, or chili. Or chili. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I've, I've done it. Have you ever done the chili? No. I've, Bill and I did it probably 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, was it worth it? No. No, because it's a lot of waiting in line. That and like, I don't want to wait in line to eat something. The ingredients in chili are the basis of like every terrible stomach ache I've ever had. Like red meat, mm-hmm. pork, or beans. Yeah. That can never end well. Weasty used to um, be part of the chili cook-off, but he gave up. So. Shout out to Weasty. <laughs> Come on, Kendall. You got to get him back in there. <laughs> it was like him and his college roommates that did it. Yeah, together. yeah. It was fun. Yeah. So uh, you go, there's like tens of thousands of people. It's like, it's but it's very crowded, chill. In my personal opinion. It's getting very popular, very crowded. Bluegrass, really fun. We met our friends there, the normal neighborhood crew. And uh, yeah, then we went to Breaker Breaker, which we've also talked about. Yeah. Uh, had, an, had an amazing black and grouper sandwich. It's the best. Oh, and hush puppies. Oh my gosh. I think those are the best hush puppies. I mean, my grandmother would think, and she doesn't hear me say this, but my grandmother made amazing hush puppies, but these might have been better. Well, I was thinking, my sister's going to be mad at me for saying that. I was thinking uh, how my papa, because when they lived in South Florida, he would go fishing all the time. And he made, like, anytime he did a fish fry, he would make hush puppies with the fish. So with hush puppies, you have two general directions you can go in. You can go the more savory corn, because it's cornmeal, right? 
uh, savory cornmeal, or you can go sweet. They've gone chosen to go sweet at Breaker Breaker, um, which it almost tastes like a dessert. It was so like a good. dessert. I don't know what direction. I, and I, they had the pimento. Remember they had the pimento? So good. So you, they give you a little cup of pimento, and then you cut the hush puppy in half, yeah. and it's like warm so and good. gooey, and then you put the pimento on top of it. Man, yeah. So I woke up with like anxiety in the middle of the night. Like, you felt oh, guilty? I, oh my gosh, I can't believe I had two, <laughs> two deep fried hush puppies. Yeah, they're so <laughs> good. You weren't going to be like, this girl has problems. But it's my reality, people. But yeah, it was great. Uh, and uh, the, the good thing about Chomp and Stomp is it's a daytime event. It's always the Saturday before First Airport. So it's like a really big weekend. First Airport is also kind of a festival in itself. There's a lot of anxiety going um, into the festival, knowing that we have to like shut it down by 6 p.m. Yeah, but it's easy to do. Not for everyone. Not for everyone. Some, some people stay out late, but that gets us to the airport ride. First airport of the season. Well, hold on. Before we talk about this, can I just say, I just want to clarify on the record. I have nothing to do <laughs> with ATL PTN. Yeah, people are sending you well, like mean messages. Yes. Thinking that you're in charge of ATL This PTN. has been happening for years. Bruce Wayne runs ATL PTN. Yeah. Chad Strickland does not. And Chad Strickland is not Bruce Wayne. Correct. Because <laughs> I think people think so, you're joking. Don't send me your message about how you're mad that you didn't get on the airport poster. Yeah, yeah. Now, I will say I am on the elder advisory board <laughs> for the ATL PTN. But yeah, so I just want to make sure everyone knows that. I don't make the decisions. There really aren't any decisions to be made, quite frankly, because it's, it's been the same every year for yeah. 40 plus and years. And the people on the poster are people that have been doing airport consistently for years. That's what I told this it has guy. nothing to do with like uh, how strong you are, like right. where you come from. No, it's just people that have been showing up to airport and helping promote airport for years. Yeah. That's who gets on the poster. Clout. Yeah. It's it, it's like anything in life. The more time you put in, the more you get out. It's being part of the community. Yeah, exactly. For a long period of time. Yeah. Uh, I think what we'll do before we get into the details of ATL, um, of, sorry, of the airport ride, um, we talked about, I think we could have a standalone podcast where I just interview elders to talk about the history of the Atlanta Peloton. Yeah, I like that. That could I, be I pretty think cool. You should. Yeah. So we get like Chisel, Ted Manley. And we'll go around with like the little microphone that we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Interview, yeah. Dan Asbury. Yeah. Hunt down Steve Carroll. Like we could, uh, it could be really cool. Yeah. Because I think so many people get to participate and contribute in these rides. Like, like it's just magic. Like they just happen. Yeah. <laughs> when you don't realize that like a lot of people 20, 30, 40 years ago were the ones organizing these rides and putting them together and putting the routes together. And the like it, airport ride was started by Scott Hilburn, Chis Chisel, Lee Showers, and a couple of other guys as a winter, you know, training ride. You was, had to stay in the, in your small chain ring. It, yes. Let, let that sink in for everyone. It was a small chain ring only ride i wish it was that again the entire time and we kept it like super slow it was long base miles it's, it's when training was different there was like a different philosophy around training now i, I think, have no idea what the philosophy around training is now i think it's just bash your face in as much as possible well because that's more relevant to someone that only trains 10 to 20 hours a week we were training like world tour pros like lance when they train 40 to 50 hours a week and so you'd get your long base miles over the winter to build up and then start doing intensity in the spring. So that's what the the ride was created for. It was a small chain ring ride. We did the entire thing. We stopped when we get to 29. So everyone listening, when we take that hard right onto 29, it actually used to go, we used to not t take that right to go to 29. Uh, and we would keep going straight to Palmetto. Hmm. And then we'd take a right in the actual town of Palmetto, hmm. then come up where it's like just two lanes. Mm -hmm. And we would stop at the gas station on the left. When did that go away? Why? Why did it go away? I think they were doing road construction it's on that road. The road construction. Yeah, they were doing road construction. Make so sure this was know. a detour to get us back to 29. So then we would stop when you turn right on the 29. That gas station, yeah, yeah. we used to stop I there. I wish we could do that still. The entire ride would stop. 
but you had to hurry. Like yeah. everyone, like, yeah, like, was doing, like frantically. No, no, like frantically. We're not hurrying. waiting on like uh, Brock to go in and order a Happy Meal from next door. Right, right, right. <laughs> or Warnicky ordering a, a, a egg sandwich and sitting down <laughs> and having a meal. No, this was like you or had Ansley spending thirty minutes just to pick out the bag of chips that she wants. You had literally, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, ninety seconds to. It was like a pit stop. Go in, get your honey bun get your Gatorade, you come out, you unwrap it, you start eating the honey bun, pour the Gatorade in, and everyone's starting to ride again already. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then, But it was still, again, small chain ring, so you, even then you, you catch could up. catch back on. Yeah. Uh, but it stopped with, I want to say 2008-ish, 9-ish, no, maybe, maybe even before that, 7-ish. I'd have to ask Dan. Okay. Um. There was a group of guys at the front that really didn't like each other. Like, really didn't like each other. No. Serious conflict. I wish we had that still. Add and, more excitement. And so that became so intense that those certain guys wouldn't stop because they were going so hard to try and drop the guys that they hated, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, and it was just pack mentality where people just started making decisions like, oh, do you want to do the group that stops or do you want to keep going with the, the group that's fighting each other? Yeah. So yeah, there's a little history lesson. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a whole episode on this. Okay. I'm excited for that because yeah. I've heard bits and pieces, but I want the full story. Yeah. yeah and we, I think people need, like you said, they need to appreciate what, what they're showing up to and how long it's been around. It was a much different environment. We were, there was a lot of camaraderie. I mean, there still is a lot of camaraderie, I, yeah, I feel like there still is. but it was more. That's the only reason I showed up today was just to see the people. It was more brutal. So like, God, cause you know, guys my age are like harder on each other you mean brutal like not necessarily physically but brutal like emotionally verbally verbally yeah that's what i mean by verbally definitely like you scream at each other more a lot of bottles at each other a lot of yelling a lot of name calling yeah there was there was yeah it was uh but we were all friends yeah yeah after the ride it was like a you 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 know put the kids out front and let them fight and then they're friends again well i think it's what we've talked about in the past is that guys traditionally showed affection by being mean, giving each other a hard time. Yeah. By giving each other a hard time. Like you see, like me and my friends, like we give each other a hard time. Yeah, like yeah. we make fun of each other. Caveman behavior. It's, I don't know if it's caveman behavior. It's, it's just a way that I think guys used to show affection yeah. towards each other was by making fun of each other basically and yeah, telling yeah. each other that they sucked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Made you all better. Right. And so that, that doesn't, and then no one took offense to it. It was like, like you just did it back and forth. Whereas now that doesn't exist. Like I have to, you know, be very conscious of that. Like I can be like that. Still sensitive to emotions. I have to be like, I can, I'm still like that with Scott DeMeyer and like, you know, guys and Ryan, like we all give each other a hard time, but. Like um, my age and younger guys are, they're sensitive. Yeah. Millennials. I wonder what caused that. Like we watched that, um, we watched that movie, uh, No Hard Feelings. If, if oh, you haven't yeah. watched, it's actually pretty. It's with Jennifer Lawrence. I have no idea what the the kid's name is that acts in it, but but it was a really good movie. But the point of the movie, well, was, let me say, it. the first ten movie, ten minutes of the movie sucked. Get through the first ten minutes. I, it's like they switched writers ten yeah. minutes in because the first ten minutes you're like, what is Jennifer the, Lawrence doing in this? movie? And the first ten minutes have really nothing to do with the rest of the movie. They like, could have cut out that guy completely. Yeah, the first, it, was, it was weird because remember like. Then she goes. Eh, it's anyways. the guy from the bear. Yeah, it's really weird. It's like he was like the brother of someone making the movie, and they just like want to give him a cameo or something. Yeah, but, it's really weird. Uh, but the whole premise of the movie is that she sees an ad. These rich parents in Montauk place an ad in like um, it was Craigslist. Craigslist that if they they found a girl to date their son, they would <laughs> give the girl a Buick. A Buick, yeah. And so she like through not all a, these... not a LeBaron like a Regal yeah yeah so all these like things happen to her so she gets to this point where she like desperately needs money and needs a car and so she sees she's the ad. an Uber driver and even though she's he, the kid's nineteen she's thirty two she's like I I don't look that old I could take this job and the whole thing is like the parents think the kid is completely helpless because he's like a nerd and he only plays video games and plays the piano and like doesn't have friends and doesn't go out and, which is all true which is all true but the reason what you see at the end is a huge part of that was the helicopter. The, like they yeah. were helicopter parents. His parents made him that way. And so this whole time they're like blaming him basically as like this kid that's just not capable of forging relationships. But really it's them being complete helicopter parents, keeping him from doing anything and feeling anything and experience anything bad or good that made him this way. So we never talked about the airport ride. Um, you said you thought attendance was down. I did, yeah. 
I, think, I drifted back. I think and maybe forth. you're right. Like, well, I, I went immediately to the front. I there, are, I would say traditionally are 200 to 300 people in the first airport. It's ride. usually overwhelming. And so this year, I'd say it was less, like maybe 150. I wouldn't even say it was that. I'd say it was 100. It was big. Knowing that you know this is only my second group ride in 10 weeks, uh, and my elbow is still broken. I can't straighten it, so I took evasive, aggressive maneuvers, and I rode top 10 wheels the entire. Babe, you did great. Like you, I, I, I was actually kind of annoyed because I was like, wait a minute, I took all this time off because he's taking this time off because he had to, <laughs> and I'm doing it out of like the kindness of my heart. And now you're just like riding like nothing. You never took time off. Yeah. It's like you never stopped. And then me, That's I'm in John the back Atkins like said. huffing and puffing. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. How did this happen? It's the, it's the, and, and I had, there were several comments about that, by the way. It's the millions of miles I have in my legs. Well, I'm going to remember that next time because I'm not taking time off next time. Yeah, it's the millions of miles. <laughs> um, so yeah, I did that just to, to be safe. And uh, the group was pretty fast on, on two. Uh, did you see all the... Uh, QOMs and like uh, trophies I got. Yeah, just like, going out there it was kind of crazy. You yeah. think about how many times I've done it. And uh, Michael was a big part of that, keeping it fast. And and that's a a, a, stra- a strategy for the early part of the ride is you do it fast so people don't bunch up and it's a lot safer. Although apparently there was a crash early on because a guy was trying to take a video on his cell phone. Stop and doing doesn't that. have the capabilities to do that. Yeah. Um, I didn't see it. I think I had just moved up at that point because I finally got, I was like, I was surfing the back a little bit because I wasn't quite sure how my legs would feel. And then I finally was like, this is really terrifying. And so I just like literally booked it up the the left-hand side and got to the front. Yeah. I would say if if you haven't been riding for over 15 years and you haven't pinned a number on at least a hundred times, you do should not have your phone out at any point. You need to keep both hands on the bars. Yeah. You need to look straight ahead. You do not, there's no reason to look backwards ever. Ever. Yeah, like why are people always looking backwards? Ever. There's no reason to look what backwards. What are you looking for? So that's uh, kind of my general rule. So apparently they crashed. We kept going. No um, one heard it. Or I, I didn't hear it. Yeah, at the peace stop, Nikki and I kept going um, just to avoid. The next segment after the peace stop is, uh, I think, probably the most dangerous segment. It's from the peace stop until the, there's a split between the yeah. long and, and short option. No, uh, the most dangerous segment is coming back on 29. On long option. That's where all the bad crashes happen. I guess. That's where my bad crash was. That's where the crash was today. So then... But it is sketchy. The group caught us. We had a small group. Yeah. Uh, as we went through the hills in the forest, stayed with them through that. But we had pre-planned to do Middle Airport, which is a hybrid um, where we cut across and then they catch us again. I at the very Middle end. Airport. Yeah. At, and we had a good group, and it was uh, it was nice. But apparently, there was a really bad crash on twenty nine coming back in, and uh, a guy hit a bump, and his hands came off the bars, and uh, he went into another person and sent them into the oncoming traffic. And apparently, there was a near miss with a car, which uh, thank goodness that didn't come to fruition. But everyone uh, heard the car like screeching to a halt, so they yeah. thought like this person was dead. Yeah, yeah. But luckily, he didn't get hit. So it's a very dangerous sport, and if you're not confident in your ability to be there then you really shouldn't be yeah uh it's a very dangerous ride it's a dangerous sport and uh it's not a place to learn how to ride in a pack it's a it's a place if you need if you need to learn how to ride in a pack you need to go do that at a different ride for many years before you come to the airport ride well and what i always say is like it also depends on your fitness at the moment so like for me i don't have a problem doing middle airport because I'm like, I'm not fit enough. I know I'm not, I'm self-aware enough to know that I cannot stick on long option right now without getting help from people, like getting pushes. And any time that you're like, the only way I can stick is if I'm in and you're relying on someone to push you is kind of a dangerous game because you can get And while I uh, totally, I'm not a, I'm on the you know side of like, I don't mind if someone pushes me, it doesn't bother me. I know there's a lot of people who it does bother and that's totally valid as well i also don't want to put like it gets really hard and really fast no matter who you are even if you're really strong and really skilled it can still be very dangerous to push someone at like 30 miles an hour definitely um and so for me i just have gone to the point where i feel guilty going on long option if i can't do it for the most part by myself because i'm just putting others in danger and so i think there needs to be a little more self-awareness like you don't have to go out first airport and do long option you can do short option. You can do middle option. There's so many routes that you can like get to a point, like get further and further each weekend. 
Yeah. What makes it dangerous is definitely people that don't have the capabilities to be there. Yeah. And, and that's skill and strength. The yeah. skill for me is probably the bigger red flag. Because if you don't have the but, strength, then you're going to get dropped. But if you, a lot yeah. of people, thanks to uh, our friends at Wahoo, have made amazing smart trainers. There's a lot of people now that are very, very strong that don't have the skills. Yeah. And um, when we're talking about skills, we're talking about riding in a pack of 70 people going 30 plus miles an hour. Yeah, it's sketchy. Inches inches away from each other. Yeah, I mean, today I pretty much rode in the wind a lot because I was just, I haven't been on the bike in a couple of months and like you definitely get, you get a little, I mean, I get, I feel like I've, I lose it a little bit. You know, you get out of your comfort zone. You're not as like used to like guys bumping shoulders with you. So it was a great ride. Great uh, start to the winter. <laughs> anyway, so that was a great ride. Everyone like almost <laughs> died and like people crashed and then. Got dropped and the winds were terrible, but yeah, come on. It was out. windy. Come it was really, really windy. Ride. Yeah, so uh, that's the start to winter training. Kicking it's it officially off. here. Uh, yeah, afterwards, uh, we went to a pretty cool place called Bigger Staff, uh, mm -hmm. where you can just roll right in on your bike. Shout out to them because they're always super nice to us cyclists that come in there with sweaty kits on. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was really good. You had some cougar juice. Uh, yeah, really so they ha so Chad, well, I was just going to get a mimosa because I was keeping it low key. And then Chad was like, what kind of margaritas do you have? And Is that what I sound like? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And um, she said, well, we have this, this, this. And our skinny margarita is called Cougar Juice. Yeah. <laughs> it's right up my alley. I'll I take thought a it was Cougar so Juice. Funny. So then, yeah, so we all ordered Cougar Juice. Juices. Yeah. Cougar Juices. Yeah. Which led to some interesting conversations. So I guess let's jump into some feedback around Michael's podcast. Uh, it's been a hit. Huge hit. It's like insane how many people have listened to this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So all of our new um, under 23 cycling listeners. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all our new European uh, cycling influencer listeners. Yeah. We're glad to have you. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick on the feedback. Like what... I've noticed that was really interesting on feedback that people said they really appreciated was hearing how authentic he was around training, self doubt, like vulnerability, vulnerability, like hearing someone who's, you know, going through the same thing that everyone goes through, but has FTP of 500 or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Uh, and it was raced at, you know, the highest level to hear him talk about the same thing that everyone else thinks about whenever they train and then aren't able to perform. Yeah. Like a lot of people are like, I'm so glad he talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. I like the part where he's like, like our backs hurt, our knees hurt, our like, you know, like there's all these things happening to all of us. It's not just like, we're not like these perfect robots that don't experience pain and just hammer. Yeah. Which you think they are, but they, they're going through the same thing and the, yeah. the, the emotions and they're everything just tougher else. And yeah. Stronger. <laughs> More genetically yeah, gifted yeah, too. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so uh, great feedback from Michael. I think we've gotten more questions about next year and what Michael's doing. Uh, don't know if we were completely clear, but we, you know, he's going to be racing, hopefully doing the Lifetime Grand Prix. Like that's the focus, um, but also doing select road events and some other mountain bike events as a privateer, but really under the Niche Speed Club banner as a sponsor. We're one sponsor. Uh, we have other corporate sponsors. Uh, which include uh, currently Apto Solutions, uh, and there will be a few more corporate sponsors that are going to be announced in the near future. Uh, and all of these, you know, organizations are coming together to help support him through next year's campaign. Uh, and uh, you know, it's going to be very similar to what you've seen from other, you know, independent kind of privateers and what they do. But I think it'll be a little more unique in the variety uh, that he's going to engage in in terms of racing. And then there's going to be a pretty big brand component to what we do as well. So the, you're going to see a lot of different kit designs. You're going to see a lot of different uh, types of exposure that we're going to be focused on. And you'll them. be able to buy them. You're, there's going to be supporter kits that you'll be able to like in the community, you'll be able to buy. And I think that's something different too. Cause a lot of times you see these guys, they just have their own team kits and no one can be a part of it. Yeah. But I think what spurred this idea for us is really like the Miami cycling scene. They do a really great job at that where these local teams have their team kits and then they also have supporter kits. And we see how big of a hit that is because if you're on a group ride and you, you know, you're not a pro, you but the 20 year old who's a pro, if you can support him by, by buying a supporter kit, I think most people would do that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And then there's a lot of pride in seeing him at Unbound, you know, wearing the same kit you're wearing. Exactly. So, um, so that's going to be a big part of the program next year. 
uh, along as, as well as some other things that hopefully we'll be able to announce other sponsors here soon. I, I know Wahoo has committed to being a sponsor as well. Uh, and so you're going to get, we'll announce some more industry sponsors yeah. as uh, the weeks go on, but uh, it's looking really good. I'm, I'm really impressed with the amount of people and connections and relationships that he's been able to develop and that we also, you know, are a lot of people that we are, have deep relationships with that want to support him and what he's doing next year. For sure. Yeah. It's going to, I'm really excited for him. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a great year. We got to start strategy. I think our, our first meeting with him is next week and we're going to start working on strategy. Yeah. So next week we will have a guest, very exciting guest. Uh, and, uh, we're really looking forward to sharing that conversation with you in the near future. Yeah. It's going to be a really exciting guest. Um, so stay tuned for that again. Thank you to all the people who listen to the podcast. It's really, um, it's really cool when like on airport today, I met someone who I only knew through Instagram and like, I'm, I'm that person that goes up and I'm like, Hey, I know you through Instagram. Really? Um, and, uh, he was like, Oh, I listen to your podcast. And I love it. If you listen to the podcast, please tell us like, don't eat, like we love to meet new people. Don't feel like, Oh, I can't like introduce myself. Like I, I love meeting new people. So if you listen to the podcast, but you don't necessarily know us that well, come up and say hi. And, um, yeah, we love hearing that, you know, you're listening to the podcast. It's great. Yeah, we do. Yeah, uh, we will talk and subscribe and share. And uh, all, one thing I always tell to people, like if you like it, like make sure you tell people about it. Share it. Yeah, it share it. Um, if you share it on your Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or any social platform, we will send you a hat. We get some stickers. We need to start sending some stickers. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, I think also um, maybe we uh, reconsider Sunday after airport for energy purposes, recording purposes. I'm pretty exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like I've been like trying to pump the energy up, but I'm pretty tired. Yeah. So maybe we'll do some Friday next week. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone. All right. Over and out.